don't know how special that is. Yeah, they didn't even need to be prompted. Wow, that that's means a, they really do like you. That's it's a good. rowdy bunch. <laughs> okay, so our next guest is a Toronto-based social entrepreneur. She is the CEO of the Center for Social Innovation, which is co-working for people who care about the community, who do work on community projects, and it's a community launchpad. So social innovation also created a community tool that changes how people raise money. And this tool for raising money was so successful in 2010, they actually demonstrated its power by buying a $4 million building, needed it all through the power of social capital. So we're going to learn a little bit more about this and how it might be coming here to our community and many of your other communities that you're involved in. So please put your hands together for Tanya Sermon. Thank you very much. So rowdy. Yeah. Woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing them I've like always a, wanted to do you're that. Playing them like an instrument. <laughs> yeah, go it's for like it. Orchestra. Yeah, no, you know? I'll work with you too. Give us a song. Yeah, we'll, we'll get. Oh no, 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 that's okay. my limit. Yeah. I thought you were gonna pull out the John Williams yeah, on us. Yeah, almost. We can give you... <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about you. So you're a fabulous entrepreneur, but I want to start uh, by talking about what it takes to get things moving in a community. Yeah. yeah. Because I have been, I, I have been, have had my mind blown by how many people around here came for money or they thought we needed some money to do something and really when they get the kind of support that they wanted that they're actually able to do it on their own like how much money affects great entrepreneurs is a lot smaller than I thought in my mm -hmm. opinion so I wanted to hear a little bit more about um, how does a community without a Tony Shea in the middle of it grow? Well I mean first of all I, some acknowledgement like what an incredible gift to be able to have that kind of um, contribution into Las Vegas I mean Downtown yeah. Project is, is an incredible anomaly. And, uh, and I mean, I'm, it's my first time in Vegas. Uh, I'm pretty ever. excited to be here ever. Oh, wow. Well, ever, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the things that drew me here was the Downtown Project. Uh, it's just an amazing, uh, uh, I'm fascinated to see how it's going to go. And for somebody like myself in Toronto, where we don't have a very large venture capital sector, where there isn't uh, investments um, uh, readily available, one of the big questions is how do we build that same kind of entrepreneurial spirit? Right. And in the case of the Center for Social Innovation, our mission is really focusing on social ventures or social mission organizations. So we're not just interested in a tech startup. We're interested in the tech startup that's facilitating social impact or social change in some way. And so you're further alienated from access to capital. Because by and large, social mission uh, ventures don't offer the kind of returns that a regular venture might. Right. And so okay. your opportunity to recruit investment and your investor pool shifts. And so the real question becomes, how do we tap into the power of citizens to become investors in great new ideas that matter to the planet? So at the Center for Social Innovation, we're a co-working space, a community, and a launch pad for over 600 social ventures. But as we ourselves are also a social enterprise, and as we were growing, we were, we were flummoxed with this question. We had a, a vibrant 24,000 square foot space. We had 175 organizations in the space. And the question was, uh, we wanted to go buy a building. Well, how does a little tiny nonprofit organization with great big ambition raise $6.8 million? Like, how do you get $6.8 million to buy a building? I have no idea, yeah. So one of my colleagues said to me, Tanya, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they said, uh, one of my colleagues said to me, if you can turn your social capital into financial capital, then you're really on to something. And so we created a community bond. And quite honestly, it's a loan instrument. It's a really straightforward financial tool that a nonprofit or a for profit could do, although ours, in the case of us, it has to be a nonprofit which offers a 4% flat rate return to be able to invest up to 10, or starting at minimum $10,000 into uh, a bond that is secured against the value of the building. Okay. So it's quite simply a loan. And our example of the community bond, although it was secured against a mortgage, it allowed us to buy a 36,000 square foot building, fill it with over 185 social mission organizations. They all pay rent. It's a, it's a sort of a a really big co-working space plus, 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 and that revenue allows us to pay back that debt to those investors. It turned out that we, didn't, we were able to go to unaccredited investors or not rich people. We were able to make it retirement <laughs> because that's who we had, right? That's who we were working with. We were able to make it retirement savings eligible because it was secured against the building. 
And what we were able oh, to okay. do, yeah. right, is we were able to actually recruit and uh, have, we now have 60 community-based investors that are all co-owners of that building. So this model in 2010, this was pre-crowd financing, pre-crowd funding, just at the sort of get-go, we are kind of an early example. Um, but now we're seeing this model being replicated all over the place and in very micro ways. And so like the project you heard about with the mill, that's the kind of micro entrepreneurship that seeds something. And then the really interesting question is, once you've got that idea, once you've got some traction, once there's a little bit of money in there, how can you actually leverage the power of your, your community to be able to get those projects to roll? Yeah, well, that, that, so that'd be my question. So you have, I can see getting this bond put together, but are you, how, what percentage of a community do you get to buy in on the ones that are successful? And I mean, are you like knocking on doors saying like, how about 5% of your retirement in this new bond? <laughs> is that actually, like, how are you guys getting people involved in that sense and then to trust you and then for the whole snowball to start rolling? Uh, and there's no question, we, um, we were six years old by the time we went to go raise that money. So we had an established track record, we had legs on the ground, we had a very strong brand and identity, and we were based in the community, for the community, by the community. And so we had a lot of legitimacy to be able to go out to folks, but what was super cool is we were to get our members, were able to invest, but also we were able to get private foundations to invest from their private capital pools. So not the part okay. that they give away, but the part that they actually, actually invest. Yeah. yeah. And so we were able to go to uh, people who were rich, people who were poor, not so poor, uh, and be able to, be able to really, I, I, fundamentally, the important thing here is it wasn't about the money. When we created the community bond, it was about the relationship, and it was about the, the, um, the power of citizens coming together to be able to co-create something that they wanted. And, and real quick, are you, so you're limiting the investments to a geographic location? Is that, I mean, basically if I give a bond, it would have to be invested in a small business X amount of miles from me? Or how do so, you... So we did the community bond once to buy a building. Okay. So that was our, our straight up. And now what we're doing is we're facilitating and supporting other social mission organizations to be able to gotcha. access that kind of capital. So the kinds of places that we're seeing things happening is one of the projects that's replicating the model, kind of crazy, Zupu. Right? Okay, anybody know what that is? No. So, so there's a really, I'm looking at it going, it's Zupu. So this, is, so this is a really interesting model. This is a, um, a young entrepreneur in Toronto who'd been working with the Toronto Zoo, and he noticed that there was a lot of poo around. And his idea was to actually um, uh, power a biodiesel plant with Zupu. And he needed to raise, a cool, yeah. I know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool he needed to raise a couple of million dollars, and so he issued zoo shares, which are the evolution of the community bond, it was a zoo share to be able to capitalize this biodiesel facility that was able to be then. Now, the project's not up and running yet, but it gives you an yeah. example of the kinds of things yeah. uh, that are starting to, we're starting to see. So it's really about, and I think the, the secret, um, the, the, secret the, the gift here is they're going, you know, you've got the assets. When you have legitimacy and you've got connection into your community and you've got those social networks and the those people who are so vitally important to your work, but they may not appear to have money at first. You think you have to go elsewhere or other for those resources. And in fact, I think what um, this is trying to do is really stretch our imaginations around where are the assets? How do we connect into those assets and find really clever tools to be able to engage them in helping you to be a co-creator in, uh, in the solution? Okay, so if one of the main reasons we thought you'd be a great guest is because I wanted you to paint a picture of, of a possible way that in the future this community could be more owned by its own community, a place where yeah. um, some of the Tony Shays start taking a backseat to mm -hmm. other people who have invested little pieces to make some other big things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, just, I mean, I know, you know you don't know exactly how it goes out, but how could something like that evolve? Well, I mean, us? I think that's the beautiful thing. I mean, you in Las Vegas have an incredible leg up, which is you've, you've got this magnetic attractor. Tony Shea and the Zappos. Slotzilla and, and, yeah. yeah, and there's this incredible, <laughs> what did you just say? Oh, slot, Slotzilla's right out the window, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. There you go, there you go. Thank um, you. But you've got this incredible magnetic attractor, which is Tony Shea has been willing to make a, a huge investment to give you a leg up. But the real test is going to be at the end of that period, that five-year period, where you... Uh, many of you have been drawn to Las Vegas because of that. That's that sort of the carrot. And the really interesting question is, what are you going to do as citizens 
to enrich Las Vegas, to co-create Las Vegas and to turn it into the community that has the legs to last for generations. And that is, to me, about your imaginations. It's about what you, what's important to you. It's about how your values are reflected in the communities that you're building. And to me, it's, it, you've got this incredible leg up, this incredible leapfrog ahead, but just don't, don't lose that. You know, like you leverage that momentum, make smart investments now in building local entrepreneurs and, and micro entrepreneurship and being able to kind of reimagine and take this moment mm. to reimagine what's possible because you know what, the, that money won't be there and it's going to be up to you guys to, to make Las Vegas what you want it to be. Feel like pulling an all nighter right now. Yeah, I let's love do it. it. <laughs> Let's go build something. <laughs> All right, so they can follow you on Twitter. At Tanya Sermon, uh, T-O-N-Y-A-S-U-R-M-A-N. Uh, but also you can check us out at socialinnovation.org. We have locations in Toronto and in New York, and we are home to incredible people just like you guys. So check us out. Okay, keep the creativity going. Yeah, I like it. Is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.